Two years after we got married, I still felt like we were just starting our journey together. It had been two years since we promised to be together forever, but my heart sank when my wife happily announced, I'm going to have a baby. The father was my boss. I remembered her saying, let's wait to have kids. I want us to enjoy being newlyweds when we first got married. My name's Ryan Kitchen, and I turned 30 this year. I married Susan two years ago after meeting her at work. Even though we worked in different parts of the company, I couldn't help but admire her beauty whenever we passed each other in the office or shared an elevator ride. When a coworker finally introduced us, my heart soared with joy. I'd always looked for chances to chat with Susan, and I wasn't going to miss this one. I watched all the movies and read the books she suggested. Slowly but surely, my efforts to get closer to her were paying off. At that time, it seemed Susan had a boyfriend, but I didn't pry too much into it. I was showing her that it didn't matter to me. Looking back, I'm amazed at how persistent I was. Susan decided to leave her job and become a stay-at-home wife, and I'm glad she's taking care of our home. She's taking cooking and flower arrangement classes, having relaxed lunches with friends, and enjoying a comfortable life. Two years into our marriage, just when our parents started hinting about wanting grandchildren, something unbelievable happened. The busy overtime season was over, and I was feeling great, leaving work on time. Thinking that Susan might be feeling lonely because of my busy schedule, I decided to surprise her with her favorite cake on my way home for the upcoming long weekend. I thought we could go on a mini vacation together. I grabbed brochures of nearby tourist spots from a travel agency near the train station. To save her the trouble of cooking, I ordered takeout. I'm back. I managed to leave work early today, I told Susan as I took off my shoes at the front door. She hurried over from the hallway, looking surprised at my early return. While explaining about the takeout dinner, I handed her the cake she loves. However, something seemed wrong with Susan. Susan, is everything all right? I asked, handing her my suit jacket and noticing her small nod. Her expression was serious as we sat down in the living room. Susan took a seat across from me, and then she dropped a bombshell. I'm pregnant, and I think we should end our marriage. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Susan and I hadn't had any children yet. She was the one who had initially wanted to wait before starting a family right after our wedding. I had agreed to wait, wanting to respect her wishes to enjoy our early married life. We had been careful for the past two years. So how could she be pregnant now? I want a divorce for the sake of the child, she said, a phrase I never expected to hear from her in such circumstances. I had always imagined using those words joyfully together. Susan's expression was blank, but her decision to divorce seemed final. Please sign these papers. I want a divorce for our child, Susan said, laying out divorce papers already signed by her. Susan's parents had already signed the witness section of the divorce papers. She had talked to them beforehand. I want to find out who the father is, but I can't lose my composure here. I have my dignity too, she explained. So you're sure about this? I asked, and Susan nodded firmly in response. After that, I struggled to keep the pen steady as I signed the papers. Susan neatly folded the divorce papers, indicating she had already packed her belongings. With a large suitcase in hand, she made her way to the door, leaving me speechless. I couldn't find the right words for Susan as she prepared to leave. She didn't look back at me. Her feelings for me were gone, evident from her expression. She disappeared into the fading light, dragging her suitcase behind her. All I could do was watch her leave. That night, I drank alone until I passed out. Waking up in the living room, I realized I had caught a cold. It wasn't just a hangover. I was plagued by headaches and chills. I called my workplace and said I needed a sick day to recover. Reflecting on last night, I wondered if it had all been a dream. But there sat the liquor bottle and the pen on the living room table, reminding me it wasn't a dream. Susan had really betrayed me and left. Reality hit me hard and my chest ached with pain. It's true what they say, the harder they fall. I couldn't believe how much I now despise Susan the woman I had once loved so deeply. Determined to find the other man, 
I spent the day searching through Susan's belongings. Despite my anger, I couldn't help but notice the ring and bracelet I had given her during our dating days still in the jewelry case. And then I found our wedding ring in the trash. What was she thinking when she threw it away? Just thinking about it made me feel sick. Despite spending the whole day looking for clues about the other man, I only succeeded in worsening my fever. Despite my efforts to keep busy, my health didn't fully recover in just one day. In the end, I ended up taking a week off from work to sort things out. When I finally returned, I was taken aback to find that my coworkers already knew about my divorce, even though I hadn't shared the news with them. How are you holding up, Ryan? Seems like you're quite sensitive, getting sick over a divorce, remarked my direct boss, Tom Gary, with a smirk. Derry had always been a thorn in my side, constantly making things difficult for me with his pretentious attitude and questionable behavior. As I reluctantly tolerated his presence, it dawned on me that he had mentioned the divorce. Then it hit me. Before Susan and I got married, she and Gary used to work together in the same department. Didn't Susan inform you about the divorce? Or were you too busy nursing your fragile ego? He taunted, and suddenly everything clicked into place. Are you the father of Susan's baby? I asked through gritted teeth. Gary, with an air of superiority, confirmed it. That's correct, he replied, clearly enjoying my discomfort. In that moment, I didn't fully comprehend the gravity of my actions. When I regained consciousness, Gary lay sprawled across the room, surrounded by a toppled chair and scattered desk items. My fist throbbed with a dull pain, a testament to the altercation. The scene resembled a chaotic festival, with some people assisting Gary while others attempted to restrain me. Despite being struck, Gary found amusement in the situation, laughing at the trouble I had unwittingly invited. He had manipulated me into losing control. Gary happened to be the grandson of the company's founder, making matters worse. By punching him, I had assaulted a future executive. Predictably, I was suspended and ultimately terminated from my job. Now, I was not only unemployed but also abandoned by my wife. My life spiraled into disarray. Though I knew I needed to find work to survive, my actions lagged behind my thoughts. Daytime became an excuse to drink, and nightfall brought more of the same. It was a self-destructive cycle, devoid of motivation. The only solace was my savings, a result of past diligence. After about a month, an unexpected visitor appeared. Initially, I pretended not to be home, ignoring the doorbell. However, it persisted, ringing again after 30 minutes, prompting another round of feigned absence. An hour later, the doorbell chimed once more, aggravating my already frayed nerves. Irritated, I grumbled about the intrusion as I begrudgingly answered the door. Standing before me was a stranger, a woman of unfamiliar stature, her gaze piercing into me with a judgmental intensity. I felt a wave of discomfort wash over me, prompting me to shift my gaze away. May I ask who you are? I inquired tentatively. The woman, exuding an air of dignity and strength, wasted no time in getting to the point. Are you the former spouse of that woman? Her directness nearly caught me off guard, causing my heart to skip a beat. It was clear she was referring to Susan, and she didn't mince words. She introduced herself as Lillian Gary, confirming my suspicions about her relationship with Gary. The prying eyes of the neighborhood ladies passing by only added to my unease. I had always found their penchant for gossip unsettling. Please come inside. I offered hastily, hoping to avoid further speculation. Lillian accepted the invitation graciously and stepped into the disarray of my home without hesitation. I hadn't made any effort to tidy up, but she didn't seem deterred. As we entered the cluttered living room, she silently began to gather the scattered debris. I can handle that myself, I protested weakly, but she dismissed my objections. We can't have a meaningful conversation amidst this chaos, can we? If you're not going to assist, please take a seat. She snapped, so I straightened up and settled onto the couch, watching in silence as she efficiently tidied up the room. Why don't you freshen up, she suggested. Her words caught me off guard, prompting me to hurry to the bathroom. I quickly washed my face, startled by the unfamiliar face staring back at me in the mirror. I shaved, washed, and calmed my hair. 
feeling a semblance of normalcy return. For the first time in a while, I felt a bit more human. Returning to the living room, I found the cleaning already completed, with the trash bag and placed in the hallway. I used your kitchen, Lillian mentioned as she handed me a cup of tea. She seemed surprisingly capable for Gary's wife. Thank you. I feel like myself again, I expressed, surprised by the sincerity of my gratitude. Lillian responded with a faint smile, though it quickly faded. My husband asked for a divorce because he fathered a child, she stated bluntly, clearly not one to mince words. I went through the same thing with my wife. I'm already divorced, I responded, indicating that it was no longer my concern. She let out a deep sigh, suggesting that Gary's indiscretions were nothing new to her. Apparently, he had previously settled a scandal involving Susan with money, leading her to immediately marry me as a sign of ending things with Gary. This time, Gary attempted to resolve matters with money again, but Susan refused to budge. From Lillian's tone, it was evident she still harbored feelings for Gary and desired to rid herself of Susan. So, you want to reconcile with Gary instead of getting a divorce. I summarized, surprised that she could still have feelings for someone who had cheated on her twice with the same woman and had a child with her. Lillian appeared taken aback when I asked if she didn't want a divorce, as if the thought hadn't crossed her mind. Do you believe it's possible to move forward from this? I questioned, finding her expressions and demeanor intriguing. I awaited Lillian's response with anticipation. With a slight smile, she simply remarked, We're still married after all. I'm not sure why, but her words left me feeling defeated. In the end, I asked Lillian to leave, agreeing to revisit the discussion another time. The day following Lily's visit, Gary paid me a visit. It appeared he had been informed by Lillian about her conversation with me the previous day. As a former superior, I ushered him into the living room. Gary glanced around the room and chuckled. What's amusing? I inquired. Lillian's handiwork, isn't it? Gary replied, a hint of amusement in his voice. I hadn't noticed, but it seemed Lillian's touch was evident in the tidiness of the room. The camaraderie between them grated on my nerves. When I questioned his reason for visiting, Gary disclosed that he had a favor to ask. He wanted me to persuade Lillian to divorce him. His request left me stunned. According to Gary, Lillian is unable to conceive, and he desires an heir. Susan's pregnancy presented a perfect opportunity for him. He offered me a bribe to persuade Lillian to agree to a divorce, placing a thick envelope on the table. The sight of him trying to resolve everything with money sickened me. I want children, something Lillian can't provide, he stated, pushing my patience to its limit. I grabbed him by the collar, but he continued laughing, seemingly confident he wouldn't be struck again. Just as I prepared to swing my fist, a soft hand intercepted my raised arm. Is my husband worth hitting? Lillian's voice cut through the tension as she entered the room. You left the front door wide open. That's careless, she scolded me, causing me to release my grip on Gary. Okay, I muttered, feeling the momentum drain from my confrontation. So you desire a child. Lillian murmured, her gaze fixed on Gary, who nodded in agreement. From her back, she produced divorce papers. Are you satisfied now? She asked, offering the papers to Gary with a stunningly beautiful yet unsettling smile. As Gary accepted the papers, his fingers brushed lightly against her hand, leaving me with a sense of intrusion. I quickly averted my gaze, feeling as though I had witnessed something private. Thank you, Gary muttered before swiftly exiting. We're enemies now, aren't we, Gary? Lillian waved without turning back, indicating that he had accepted her declaration of war. Once Gary disappeared from view, Lillian turned her attention back to me. Shall we nurse our wounds together? But first, let's seek our revenge, she proposed. We both decided to separately demand compensation from Gary and Susan. Knowing their wealth, we anticipated they would comply with our demands regardless of the amount. I instructed my lawyer to handle all proceedings simultaneously, driven by my desire to see them suffer even if just a little. This retaliation would be child's play, a small taste of payback. After making our demands, Susan finally appeared, 
tears streaming down her face. It seemed Gary would pay his share, but he refused to cover Susan's portion. While this was expected given their unmarried status, there seemed to be more to the situation. During a meeting involving the four of us, Gary attempted to shift blame onto me for Susan's infidelity, citing my busy work schedule as the cause of her loneliness. You're quite the master of deception, aren't you? But your tricks won't work on me, I retorted. Lillian then produced a report from Gary's private investigation, commissioned by his parents. It revealed that Susan and Gary had been involved prior to my marriage to her, and Susan had accepted a settlement to end their relationship. However, their affair had continued clandestinely. Apparently, my marriage to Susan had been Gary's idea as a cover-up. My dedication to work and my somewhat insensitive nature made me an ideal husband for their purposes. Additionally, working alongside Gary provided them with a convenient means of monitoring me. The level of detail in the report compiled by Gary's parents, at significant expense, was astonishing. Lillian calmly read through the contents, causing Gary and Susan's faces to pale. Susan was the first to crack, her hysterical screams filling the room until they were cut short by tears. Stop it now. It's not good for the baby if you stress yourself out. We reprimanded her, prompting Susan to flinch. Under the weight of Lillian's icy gaze, Susan fainted on the spot. Gary, in a panic, rushed to her side, cradling her in his arms. Lillian's smile hinted at her surrender. That's a pity. I believe Lillian truly loves Gary. Love and hate are two sides of the same coin. The deeper the love, the deeper the hate, she mused. It seemed Gary understood this too. In the end, I played no part in the discussion, as Lillian dominated the conversation. As the meeting concluded, Lillian laughed at me, saying, That's it. Afterwards, news of my divorce spread throughout the workplace, as I had disclosed it to my colleagues. Despite the company's attempts to keep it under wraps, it was too late. Gary found himself sidelined at work and estranged from his family. Susan, now remarried, struggled with issues involving her in-laws. Gary's parents, who favored Lillian, treated Susan poorly, having driven Lillian away. Once all the alimony and other matters were settled, I invited Lillian for coffee. She shared her current situation, working at a friend's company while living independently. I can't have children, so I need to be self-sufficient, she explained, seeing her speak with such sincerity eased my fears. I don't agree with your reason for independence, I admitted, surprising both of us with my firmness. I noticed she still wore her wedding ring, a reminder of Gary. Summoning my courage, I expressed my feelings, asking her to wait until I found a job. I hope to become your partner, I confessed. Lillian seemed taken aback at first, but then chuckled, acknowledging her complexity. I know I can be difficult, she admitted. I'm well aware, I replied, gently tracing the back of her hand with my finger. It seemed she was letting go of her past as she removed her ring. Then she lightly touched my hand, her affectionate gesture filling me with warmth. I'll make you happy, so please wait, Lillian explained, her laughter brimming with joy. In that moment, I vowed to protect her smile forever. As the video concluded, I reflected on our journey together, eager for the future. What did you think? Subscribing to the channel will encourage us to produce more. See you in the next video.